Welcome everyone. We are going to create the animation that you can see right now on screen. And if you want to support me in any kind of way and get access to the project files or extra tutorials, you can go to my Patreon and support me in that way. If you don't want to support me in that kind of way, a like or subscribe will also do. And otherwise, it's okay. I hope you have a nice day. Let's start this and let's jump straight into Blender. The sphere that we are going to create right now is actually quite easy to make. I used a tutorial made by 3D Greenhorn and I will leave it in the description down below. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to delete this cube and we are going to add a icosphere. Now, this icosphere we want to put the subdivisions to three. And what will happen now, if we use a subdivision surface, you can see that we get more of these like circular forms. So now we're going to apply this. And what we can do inside edit mode, we can select one of these middle vertices, then go to select, select similar and amount of connected edges. So here you can see that we don't have to select all of them separately. Click on X and dissolve vertices. You can see that there are a few that are still left. So we're going to do exactly the same. Select the middle one, select, select similar amount of connected edges. X and dissolve vertices. Awesome. So now you can see that we kind of have these hexagonal shapes left, but these vertices are not really necessary. So we're going to select everything with A, click on X and then limited the solve to get rid of them. Awesome. If you select everything, click on I two times, and then you can see when you move your mouse, you can see that we create a inset. So around here will be fine. Then I'm going to extrude it, but you don't really want to extrude it just towards a position. So if I'm going to right click, everything snaps back into place, but the extrusion is still here. So now with everything still selected, I'm going to click on S for scale and scale this a bit down. So somewhere around here will be fine. Then click on I two times again and inset it once more. Then you can delete these faces and you can see that now we have, yeah, this very cool hexagonal shape with hexagonal holes in it. But if we're going to give this a subdivision surface, you can see that they all become nice and round. So that is essentially what we want and what we need. Give it a shade smooth. And now we have a decent looking sphere. So we want multiples of these spheres, okay? So we want to duplicate it once more, scale down, and this is going to be the small sphere. Then this one is going to be our big sphere. The big sphere needs to be broken down, of course, right? It breaks into like two pieces. But how are we going to do this? You can try to do it with the geometry. So you can try to create a whole cut. This does, however, kind of intervene with the shape. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a cube, move this cube around the X axis for one, and then we're going to select our big sphere, add a modifier, Boolean, and then select this cube. So now if we hide the cube, you can see that this has been booleaned off. The problem with Booleans is, yeah, sometimes depending on the geometry and how dense the geometry is, it might yeah, create some of these yeah, little uh, geometry like artifacts, I guess. So how can we change this? What can we do? Well, we're not going to change it. We're just going to duplicate this. So we have both sides. And after it, I will show you a quick technique. So these little annoying cuts are not too visible in your animation. So let's rename this cube to Boolean. Uh, let's do left. Then... We're going to rename the big sphere also big sphere left. We're going to duplicate both the Boolean and the big sphere left. Duplicate. Then we're going to rename instead of the 001, we're going to rename them to right. As last, we're going to hide the Boolean left and the big sphere left. We're going to select the Boolean right and we're going to move this cube around. So G X minus two. Then in some cases, these actually overlap. And for some reason, when you have your Boolean right here, um, if I hide this cube, you can still see the cube because it's just part of this uh, new big sphere right model. 
it's kind of weird, and you can try to play around with insect union um, and difference. So in this case, union works for me. In some, yeah, very rare cases, it doesn't really work. So what you could do is you could go to your um, boolean right and just play a little bit around with the scale or move it a little bit to the left or right. That could also work. Just in some cases, it's kind of weird. I don't know why. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we have the big sphere left and the big sphere right, which is perfect, right? But you can see that we have these annoying, yeah, artifacts. So how do we change these? Well, we don't. What we're actually going to do is we're going to duplicate the sphere once more here. And then in this new sphere, which is just going to be the big sphere, uh, I want you to delete the left and the right. So just big sphere. And then we're going to delete the Boolean modifier. Later in this video, I will show you why we'll need three of these models. When animating these kind of complex shapes, I hate to just apply these uh, yeah, modifiers. Because what if we do something wrong and we want to change something in the future? I just don't want to do it all over again. It's just the lazy person inside me. So how can we animate this without applying all of these bad boys here? Well, what you can do is you can use parents. We can parent objects together. So if we select our Boolean left, and then our big sphere left, we can click on Ctrl P and then set parent to object. So now if I move this object, this cube will move with it. So the cube we didn't, yeah, we never really want it to be visible. So select the cube, go here into object properties, visibility, and then show in viewports and render can go off. If you ever want to see it again, just select it and then put show in viewport on again. So now for the big sphere right, we're going to do exactly the same. So open them both, select the Boolean right, then the big sphere right, Ctrl P, and then object. Also for this cube, I don't really want to see it. So show in viewports and render can go off. So now wherever I move these, you can see that yeah, it, it works as intended, right? We still have it cut in half. The thing that you want to do though, is you can see a huge difference if I move this one or this one. And that is because this one I kept at the viewport zero. I just put the subdivision all the way off. So do this for both the left and the right. And we of course have our main sphere. To animate this, I first want this to rotate around. There is one thing that we got to keep in mind. Um, when we rotate this big sphere, of course, the left and the right big spheres do not rotate with it, right? So how do we do this? Well, we're just going to create an empty. So shift C to make sure that your 3D cursor is in the middle and then shift A to create an empty. Just do a plain axis. That's fine. Then I'm going to select my big sphere left, right and the normal big sphere and as last the empty. Now, Ctrl P and then set parent to object. So now if we move, rotate or scale the empty, it will happen in the big sphere, big sphere left and big sphere right. Let's start animating this sphere. So first we want our camera in position. So just grab your camera and do whatever you think looks cool. You don't have to copy me and yeah, that's just it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put it around here, whatever, and then create a little studio. So just a plane. Move the bit downwards and then extrude one edge here. And then this is going to have a Boolean set to it. So somewhere around here and then shade smooth. So how do we animate this? Well, as you saw in my animation, I first had just this part rotating around. So just select the frame that you want to start. Click on I while you have selected your empty and then do rotation. Then you can ask yourself how long you want this to take. So let's say we want it to rotate for around 60 frames. So rotate Z 360 degrees. Then I rotation. So now in this time, it will rotate 360 degrees. Then at one point, we want this to break open, right? So how do we do this? Well, we can just move 
and do whatever we want here. So I am going to go from frame 60, click on I, then location rotation scale. Do the same for the big sphere left and the big sphere right. And then let's say it breaks open and takes around 40 frames. So at frame 100, it's going to move this bit open. Let's also unhide our small sphere so we can actually see what is yeah, on the inside of this breakage or whatever it is. Um, something like this. Now it's like broken open. So I lock rod scale for both the big sphere right and the big sphere left. And now you can see that it rotates until frame 60. And then it breaks open and it shows this little gem inside. So as you guys can see in the video, this part here in the middle is not only just a different color or a smaller sphere, but it actually emits light. You have these beams shooting off. And what for sure looked cooler than just having it very static is also rotating this sphere. So let's say it is always rotating on the inside of this model. So we have to start from frame one, I, rotation. Then um, let's do 160 and we're going to rotate this, rotate Z. Let's do around 360 degrees, I, rotation. So now you can see that it's always rotating on the inside. It of course goes slower than this sphere on the outside. And that is because there are more frames, right? So now you can see that it's still rotating. Let's put our end at 160. So our whole video is going to take 160 frames. And I want to show you that also the camera can be animated. Okay, you don't have to have always a static camera. So what can we do here? Well, I really like the way that the camera is set up right now because you can really see everything. But I only like it at the end. So maybe once it starts to open up. So at around frame 50, I want to select my camera. Then click on I and do lock rod scale. At frame one, I want to be closer to our model, right? So I'm just going to put on camera to view, zoom in, and I want to start our animation from here. Click on I, lock rod scale. So what you can see now is from frame one to 50, we are zooming out. And now slowly starts to break open. And then we have our cool little animation. Our animation can actually be a bit shorter. So let's put it at 120. And that is also good. But you can see that having always a static camera is not always the best choice. Because you can do a lot of cool movements with the camera itself. A lot of this can also be done, of course, in separate scenes. And you can kind of blend them together. But yeah, this is also a way to do this. So if you guys still remember, we have... A big sphere left, big sphere right, and also just a big sphere. But we cannot render them all at the same time. You will get these artifacts because stuff is laying on top of each other. We don't want that. So we need to animate our big sphere in some kind of way that only once it starts to break open, which is around frame 60, then these other two parts are showing. Okay? So what you want to do is at frame 59, we want only to see this big sphere. So go into the big sphere, go here into the object properties and make sure the viewport here, insert keyframe and also the render is working. Then at frame 60, I want to tick them off and then insert keyframe. So now you can see that part is hidden. We want to do the exact opposite with our big sphere left and a big sphere right. So big sphere left is going to be hidden at frame 59, insert keyframes for both. And also the big sphere right is going to have exactly the same. Now at frame 60, I want to show them. So tick it on, insert keyframe, insert keyframe, both for the big sphere left and the big sphere right. Now, the time that these small artifacts show is very minimal because it already starts to break open and then you don't really see those artifacts anymore, right? It's just one frame. So that is a little tip if you want to keep your Boolean intact without applying it and having to change a lot of geometry inside the 3D models. 
The last thing that we still need to do is we need to create some volumetric lighting, right? Of course, we also need to create some textures, but I created them inside Substance Painter and it's just very, very simple and easy. So I think in this tutorial, we'll just keep that kind of aside. But I want to show you how I created those cool beams shooting from this uh, smaller sphere. So we need two objects for that. First, we need a cube. So if you click on Shift C, you can see that our 3D cursor is nice in the middle. Then add a cube and we go to shading now and add a new shader for this cube. So let's delete this principal BSDF node and let's add a volume scatter. Okay, volume goes into the volume. And what I like to do here is I like to put the density at first quite high. Okay, uh, if we go to the viewport shading rendered, you can see that yeah, it's, it's quite dark in here. We could already add a nice HDRI if we want to, uh, just to light everything up. But in this case, I want to keep it dark because I want to see what my light is going to do. And yeah, we still need to add that light. So hide this cube for right now and just add a light right in the middle of the small sphere. So uh, just add a light, point light is fine. And what you can do now is you can unhide the cube again and then look at what this light does. So if you select this point light, you can use nodes and play around with the emission. So I can play around here and you can see what it does. So right now it just kind of emits everything a bit, um, but you don't really see those beams too much. Why is that? That is because we want to make the radius of the light way smaller. And you can see that if I just put it at 0.1, something like that, that we get these, yeah, more of these beams that we are really looking for. So now it's your turn to balance this volume scatter, like the density, maybe you want it at 0.2 or 0.4, and this light strength, right? The point light strength. Those two have to be balanced a little bit. And if they are balanced right, then you can like, see the cool beams. But this is different in every scene, okay? So I cannot say like, oh, just do this and it will work out. That is not really how it works. You have to play a little bit around with it. But this is essentially how I did it. And I think you guys already know that we can also animate this. So that's the cool thing about Blender. You can kind of animate everything. Right? So in the beginning, I do not really want any of this volumetric lighting. So this volume plus the light inside need to be turned off in the beginning, right? And when do we want this? So if we play our animation, you can see that around frame 70, our sphere starts to break open. So maybe around frame 80, our volumetric lighting starts to pop up. So how do we do this? At frame 79, we want our volume scatter to be zero. Right click, insert keyframe. And maybe around 85, we want it to be 0.4. Insert keyframe. We want to keep these two values into mind because we want to do the same with the point light, okay? So around frame 79, I want the point light to be zero. I don't want to see it at all. And at around frame 85, I want it to be whatever value was good. So in my case, it seemed to be 20. So now once we reach frame 79, we will start to get our volumetric lighting in here. And the scene also gets automatically darker. So this is everything you need to know how to create this kind of animation. I hope you guys liked it. And if you want to take a look at all the project files, they are available at my Patreon. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one.